Welcome back to Run World, and despite what I do, I see one comment on uh, just about every video. Whether it is Run World or CK2, I see the following comment. When are you going to play the Colts mod for Run World? So alright, we're playing the damn Colts mod. I don't I don't want to see the comment on any video saying, hey, play the Colts mod. Here it is. Here's your Colts mod. Um, but seriously though, it looks like it's going to be a very fun and cool and nice and just mod. The thing about the old series was the zombie mod was, uh, how do I put this, ruining everything? Like, making Rimworld really difficult to play. Um, I saw some comments basically saying, hey, it sort of ruins the game. And, and I didn't mind at first. I thought it was kind of fun, kind of interesting to have that constant danger. And then the more I played, the more I was like, yeah, no, you're right. So, welcome to Rimworld. Let's go through the mod list very, very briefly. There it is. There's your mod list. All right, let's carry on. So, what was my idea for this series? So, my headcanon, the lore, is that we have landed on this planet. And naturally, as with most things we do as, as a community, as a channel, uh, we're going to make a crazy cult around it, i.e. Elrang, i.e. Jerry King. And now we're going to make the cult of Rimworld. So carrying on with the arena theme, rather than have people fight to the death, instead you get a chance to join a cult based around our characters. And just like last series, uh, last series, I mean the couple of episodes I did, uh, trying to re-familiarize myself with the new features, of which there are none, um, we will be starting as... Not the big four, but having the big four appear in the world. So having Jerry King, uh, Elrang, Everqueen, and Diz Waltney from our old CK2 series, if you've not seen them. Um, those will be showing up in the game at some point, not as part of our starting colony. That way I think it gives it a bit more of an interesting dynamic. So what do we want to start as? You know what? We're going to go one rich explorer out to experience the universe, extra difficult. I feel like there's one character we've had on streams... There's one character that has been uh, permeated into my mind, and that is the character of Igor Throog, the shovel-faced woman from the Oblivion series, the, the fifth character, their pack mule. She needs a story of her own. She's going to found a cult based around the big four, uh, or, you know, based around worshipping Cthulhu, whatever we decide on, and we'll sort of have her guide her own destiny. So, as with the uh, Rim of Madness mod pack, as with the uh, Call of Cthulhu submod, I think it's called, all that might just be a Metallica song, I'm not entirely sure, we have... An HP Lovecraft storyteller. So we are obviously going to be using HP Lovecraft with his tentacles. I don't remember HP Lovecraft having tentacles in real life, but we'll go with that anyway. Medium. I think medium is fine. I think we'll also go reload anytime mode because we do have some uh, extra difficulty mods enabled anyway. Like the hygiene mods, we have to balance that. Like, um, well, you'll see as we get into it. I won't spoil it too much. So my head cannon for this, like I was explaining, we're going to play as Eagle Throog by herself. Fans a cult because she's insane and alone. But this is still uh, futuristic. This is still in a futuristic-based scenario. She's just in a survival base, which is why there's going to be low tech to start off with. Later on, we will build up the genetic testing, the uh, the ability to create mutants. There's actually a sub mod that allows genetic rim and this mod, the HP Lovecraft mod, to uh, to communicate, so we could craft our own genetic horrors in the image of Jerry King or whatever god we happen to worship these days. Seed hope doesn't seem right. Um, let's go with uh, what's the opposite of hope. I mean, it's probably hope hopeless, isn't it? It's probably... If you don't have hope, you have defeat. Defeat might be better. And that also seems more appropriate to this series. Uh, it would help, though, if I could spell defeat. Next time, note itself, pick a word that you can spell. Club coverage, 30% seems fine to be overall rainfall. Uh, let's make it slightly rainier, because um, it's a terrible day to have rain. Generating world. Here we go, team. What's the plan for this one? Well, I normally always play in mountains, because I like mountains. But I think we'll do a different spin on it this time. Oh, shit. So these boys are like... Uh, these are the seafaring townsfolk, so the probably worshippers of Cthulhu. What is this one? 4th Infantry Division, right? Let's stay away from those boys. And then, of course, we've got the agency dedicated to uh, defeating demonic presences in the realm. There's also, like, a wolf head there. The Wild Claws. Not sure what that is. Oh, there's also this one as well. Society of the Elder Things. That's kind of cool. Oh, I imagine... Because this mod also comes with a vampire mod, it comes with a uh, the Elder Things mod, which are like basically Elder Demons you can play as. There's also a vampire mod. So imagine there's a, a society for each one. So this actually might be vampires, I'm not sure. Anyway, what I'm thinking is, we'll play in a mountain, because I like playing in mountains. It's quite a fun start. We'll play with caves, and we'll sort of hollow the caves out and turn it into a creepy cave base. And we'll try and follow the natural structure of the caves as well. But we'll just build it up with, with you know, actual walls made of blocks and, and steel and stuff. Uh... So that we've got this kind of cool, creepy aesthetic to it, but we'll also have all the genetic testings and stuff. I kind of like this, the, the, the idea behind that. I, li I like the ethos. So, where are we going to start then? We're looking for anywhere where there are caves, anywhere where there's a river, and preferably anywhere we can grow all year round. 30 out of 60 days, not too ideal. We're probably going to have to go more souther, more more southery. 
Um, let's take a look. What have we got? Ooh, this place looks pretty good. Although if we played here, we're actually very, very boxed in. What about this one with a road and a river? Fortunately, there are no caves. There we go. Caves. All year round. 4,000 millimeters of rain. That's quite a lot. Um, western coast and caves. We could play on, on the sort of inner sea. Maybe summon some elder gods from the sea itself. That seems like a good idea. All right. Um, again, the caves are the sort of main thing, though. This is good. Tropical rainforest, green hell, mountainous rivers, granite and slate. To get to a road, we're actually not too far away. We can also dig our own road with uh, a road digging mod. Do we want to play as an elder creature? Well, Eagle Throog was not an elder creature. I'd actually kind of like to recruit them to the uh, colony later on. So maybe not you. Um, how do we make you not an elder creature? Uh, do we just add a fresh one? Yeah, there we go. We'll get rid of you. Yep, goodbye. You are going to be the character Eagle uh, Throog. I think that's how we spot her name. Uh, also known as Eagle. Now, she was a very shovel-faced lady. Um, specifically, let's go for body type change to Hulking to start off with. Because I feel like Eagle Throog was a bit of a, an absolute unit in all. Oh lord, she coming. <laughs> what was her hair type? She had just sort of like, um, relatively, not, not shaved, but she had relatively short cropped hair. Um, so if we could find something along those lines, that would be kind of nice. Now, I don't show off the character creation. I've not actually done it before in a series, so I might as well do that for those of you who don't actually play Room World yourselves who are just interested in it. Uh, this is with the Prepare Carefully mod. You don't actually get to create your characters outside of, um, you know, outside of randomizing them to some extent. That's basically all you get is a random button that you just keep have to going through. For the purposes of YouTube, though, I feel like the Prepare Carefully mod is a little bit nicer. There's really not any just sort of short cropped hair. So we'll go with the Scorpion Tail. Now, Eagle Thru had a massive head. So if we could go for, like, wide, narrow and wide, what about average and wide? Yeah, that's pretty good. You know what? Just to exacerbate her massive head, I'm actually going to change her body type to the thinnest possible. Uh, there we go. That's Eagle Throog, as I remember her. I'd say she was around 33. Chronological age is 2,899, so she's either been in deep sleep or some other uh, genetic and or cultist-related incident. Child star and a teacher, incapable of dumb labor. That could be difficult, although that is added by a trait, I would assume. Oh, no, is that also child star? prevents that oh shit hauling cleaning rearming refueling brewing refining loading cremating delivering and hauling all disabled yeah no we're not gonna be doing that um clone farmed hey that seems to suit the aesthetic organ rich womb vats and rapidly grown in simmed universe that's very cool okay i like the idea of that adulthood uh teacher eagle throog was more of a pack mule you know add filter oh wow look at this um, no disabled work types. I feel like that's probably the best one. I don't want to give her any stat buffs because we'll sort of balance her around it, but but these are good. So she would be like a like a low wage worker at best, Eagle Throog. Traits. She was she was strong, she she was powerful, she was the pack mule for the team, and she had a face like a shovel, so I imagine she'd be pretty good at melee. Um what have we got then? How about something along the lines of Sanguine might not be too bad. So Sanguine is that they have um I wouldn't say it makes them happy. That's not quite right. Content might be the right word. I think I think she would be very content with a lot in life. Also makes it slightly easier on herself as we're playing with, like I said, a lot of mods that make the game more difficult. This is probably not a bad idea. Um, she's a fast walker because she's Eagle Throog. Um, in fact, she's not even a fast walker. She's a pack mule, so she would be a jogger. Yeah, she can move faster. She's content with her lot in life. And I think she's a hard worker. You know, that, that to me sums up Eagle Throog. We're going to have quite a good character to start off with here just in case we get a little bit screwed. Um, add injury or health condition. Do we really want to add a health condition to her? Uh, probably not. We could instead add implants or bionics. So these are her sort of genetic manipulations. We won't mess around with the implants too much because it doesn't really suit the, uh, I suppose, setting. Although we are in a sort of alternate future, I do like the idea of the genetic manipulation and the sort of sacrifice and the mutations rather than the sort of cybernetic things. So, um, I feel like Eagle Throog would have, um, what do we think? Wolf muscle fibers? We didn't really get to see what that did last time, so we'll give her wolf muscle fibers and some fucking bear claws. Because that is Eagle Throog, as I remember her, a beast of a woman. Not quite the Everqueen, although I'd imagine she'd be some sort of grunt of the Everqueen, seeing as they were both Nords as well. Or at least, you know, Norsekin and uh, Eagle Throog was a Nord in our, in our Oblivion playthrough. She needs some skill. So, you know what? No shooting. She could be 10 in melee. Uh, we'll make a tenant construction, a very average character, or, you know, slightly above average character, I suppose, in that regard. That's fine. Plants are fine. Yep. I don't want to make her too powerful, otherwise it makes the game too easy. I want it to have some social, otherwise there's no chance of us being able to expand at all. This seems good. 
Now, I'm going to give her a minor passion for these things in particular. Um, just to make the early game a little easier. But she's sort of a uh, uh, jack of all trades, master of none. But she's also got potential to expand. She's a very powerful character. If we go to the use points limits, we've spent uh, 3,725. A little bit too much. Oh. Jerasim is apparently taking up 1,000 points. So actually, realistically, we're not too far out of the bounds of what is considered overpowered. Who the fuck is Jerasim? I, I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, what we're going to do is I'm going to now load in the big four, make them somewhere out there in the world. Maybe they'll be part of the agency. Maybe more likely, let's be reasonable here, they'll be leading groups of... Uh, no, that's my test character. We don't need to play as God this time. Um, more likely, they'll be... Oh, should we just load in all of them and just chuck them in the world? Give ourselves some real flavor. Hey, that seems like a good plan. So, Focal Rhino will have a Grundle the Elephant. Oh, Grundle... Silver Piggy. Sorry, my mistake. Uh, Jerry King, of course. Uh, Diswaltney, the Everqueen, and Elrang. And then we'll send them all out into the world to go and form their own adventures. And hopefully we'll see them later on in the series. It, we haven't yet had a series with all of these characters in it. So this could be pretty crazy. Even Madwell didn't quite have this ambitious of a crossover. As for equipment, uh, get rid of the female rat. Get rid of the charge rifle because that's very, very overpowered. Um, Elrang apparently costs about 47,000 points by himself. Just by Eagle, though. Just by Eagle, we're actually well within our points limit. So I feel like this is this is fairly well balanced, but not crazy well. Uh, I don't think we need 30 Glitter World Medicine. I'm just trying to make it, you know, fair and balanced and not completely broken. Right, we will save this as uh, the Cult Survivor. The the land, the landing, the crash landing survivor. Is that how you spell Survivor? Like, I don't care. Start. Let's do it. You spent too many points. Oh, shit. Turn off the point limit, genius. Let's go. Now, obviously, Elrang and Jerry King and those people are going to be broken. But for the sit, for, for the for the gameplay purposes for the emergent storytelling i do like this idea right playing as one character in room one is always my favorite start because i feel like i'm i get very distracted during the early game uh so this to me is much better no 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 igor igor throog igor i've never been so annoyed at this game in my life Turns out, long story short, apparently, if you've got fucking bear claws, apparently, and bear with me on this one, apparently it doesn't make you any better at melee combat. Doesn't You can't use that as a weapon. Bears don't use their claws as a weapon. That'd be crazy. So this fucking idiot, Eagle Throog, wanders straight into a bug nest and gets ripped apart because apparently she can't fight. Because I said, hey, she wouldn't need a weapon. She's got bear claws and she's good at melee combat. Not that I'm tilted. Anyway, uh, take two. <laughs> take two. Let's drop. Where are we dropping, boys? Uh, probably in the middle of the map, I'd assume. Right, let's see what we've got this time, then. Oh, this is a much better base. Look at this one. Ooh, okay, I like this. What the fuck is going on here? Oh, creepy. Okay, um, we've got some, like, abandoned structures. Lots of geothermal vents kicking around on this map, from what I can see. Plenty of caves. Okay, you know what? I don't know if I'll include the last clip of me, uh, of me getting Eagle through killed. But honestly, this one looks a lot nicer. What the fuck are they? Are those Chocobo? Oh, no, sorry, they're Meadow Ave. Of course they are. Um, what else have we got? Anything worth knowing? Hang on, is this where we're dropping? Oh, shit, that's not good. Oh, hang on, though. That was just where we were. That was just apparently the sky. That's called Perspective. Um, standard? Yep, that seems fine to me. All right, then. Uh, here we are. Eagle Throog, take two. I've given her a titanium pole hook this time because uh, it sounded cool, and I'm pretty sure she can use it as a weapon, which is why I wanted her to, to have it. But to be able to buy one of the mods, I've never heard of it before. Oh, shit, there's that lockjaw again. Now, I don't think you'll know what these are because I didn't include it last time, but we had some weird creatures on the map. Shit, there's loads of them. Look at that. Then we've also got a lot of bug-infested caves, so we'll have to be somewhat careful. Oh, shit, this is all like a structure over here. Look at this. Bone creep walls. Uh-huh. That sounds good. Although, I do want to check out this sort of creepy base down here because it seems like it might be a good, at least, starting point, if nothing else. Um... Again, I want to move into the caves, and I want to turn those into our base. So this area around, it, like here in particular, maybe this one, just because it's got a single entrance. That might not be bad, too bad. This one is also a pretty decent entrance, but it does have a single hole there to let people in. So we'd have to heavily fortify it. But honestly, this one's not too bad either. Um, the only thing I'm worried about is the entrance being quite sprawling. Anyway, we'll, we'll talk about that later on. In, in the meantime, we'll move to a house that already exists, uh, specifically this one. There might already be people in there, and I might just go and walk in on them... Uh, Doing some satanic cult-related shit. Let's go and take a look, Eagle. Uh, where the hell is she? She's taking ages to get over here. Right, um... No, it's just, just empty rooms. Well, that works out pretty well for us, then. 
Um, nice. Okay, we've got a we've got a building that worked out pretty well. Now it does need a roof by the looks of it, so we'll just go ahead and have a build a roof area. Move into this one. I mean, that's a great start. That's already going to save us a lot of effort, and this is probably with the miscellaneous map mod. Um, which essentially changes some of the way it's generated a little bit. Makes the world feel a little more derelict and a little less uninhabited. Which I think is kind of nice for this scenario where we've got like this sort of cosmic horrors kicking around. It does make the world feel a little more um, oppressive to have a lot of abandoned structures everywhere. So right, first things first, let's go for a stockpile zone. So I'm going to set the stockpile zone. In fact, we probably want to build doors between all of these uh, between all of these rooms. And I'll go ahead and claim it because that's not a bad idea either. Uh, select similar. Let's go ahead and claim everything. Now, is there just a claim all? Oh, right there is. That's much easier. Okay. Oh, we've already done it, apparently. Okay. So, um, let's go for stockpile zone here. That seems fine. And we do have to be a little bit careful because we are quite buffed up against the map edge there. We'll turn one of these into a freezer. This middle room can be the kitchen. This can be the dining room. This can be Eagle Throog's bedroom or maybe the other way around. It doesn't really matter too much. Um, as long as we've got doors between each, I don't really mind. That looks fine. Okay, so, Eagle, uh, my friend, first things first, let's get everything hauled over there. Right, so, the jobs are set up. Her schedule is also set up there. I've sort of given her a very generic work schedule here, so she's going to prioritize butchering, cooking, and uh, harvesting, growing above all else. If she can't do that, she'll mine out any things that need mining, and then build any things that need building glass. Again, that's mainly to come up with the fact that the game, if you set them to uh, construct, say, in the middle of a mountain here, they'll mine a block, they'll come back, pick up the, the bricks, move back over, build it, mine a block, rather than just mining all out first. So this is a little bit more efficient in that sense. All right, this is looking pretty good. We've got a roof on it already. Eagle, you are the best girl. We can also build farms around this area as well. Plus, there's also water, but I assume we can't use that for much because it's seawater. Saying that, we don't really need to drink water, though, do we? It's just used for flushing toilets and stuff. I mean, that's fine. That's, that's absolutely fine, or at least I'd assume so. Right, uh, let's go get the stuff hauled immediately then. So if we go ahead and allow everything across the map, she should just do that by herself because there isn't anything else to do right now. Yeah, there we go. Crypt titanium pole hook, gathering wood to hauling inventory. Nice. Okay, let's get everything moved over. Now, there's plenty of forage on this map as well, so I'm not too concerned about immediately starting with uh, food. What's this? Bone china wall, sandbags. Okay, we could definitely repurpose some of this stuff. We've got bone walls there. Um... What's my looking for? Limestone. We've got lots of steel, lots of compacted machinery kicking around. Um, we've got, what is this one? Bone wall again, slate, marble. All right, so plenty of structures that we can decommission. Show me I haven't got any steel structures. A lot of them have been replaced by bone, which is a little bit... Okay, we've got aluminium, so that's something. Um, and this one is bone crete as well. Weird. I do like the idea of building a base in a cave made entirely out of bone. That seems pretty fun to me. All right, how much more have you got a haul, Eagle? You've got shit tons left to haul. Come on, pick it up. Is this a Tyranid or Raptor Shrimp? Okay, no, no, that makes way more sense. Uh, you're, you're kind of horrible. What else have we got kicking around? Is there anything anything new that I've completely missed? We've got the Raptor Shrimp, we've got the Chocobos, we've got the Land Whale. I think besides that, we're good for now. Oh my god, what is that horrible creature? It's huge. Oh, it's a Rhino. Um, I, I knew it was a Rhino, I was just messing around. Okay, I got you. It was a goof. Right, so I'm building up the uh, freezer to start off with here. We've got the overall cooler being built there, and obviously the wooden door. We want the food obviously hauled into there as... Oh, was this going to be the freezer? What was this going to be then? Why would I Why would I make that the freezer when clearly we're not going to have that much food? Um, ignore everything I've told you, Igor. I've lied. Right, uh, stockpile zone in here again. This will be the freezer because it's small, easier to keep cool because it's a smaller room. Plus, we're not going to have that much stuff anyway, I doubt it. So, um... Allow rotten? Absolutely not. We'll set priority critical. That's for foods, and that is for animal corpses. Um, we're well, not all animal corpses either. We don't want... I guess we don't want question mark, question mark, question mark. Do we want an aberrant flesh beast? I mean, if it's edible, sure. Why the fuck not? Okay, you, go, uh, you seem to be pissing around and not... You know what? I'm going to actually turn off recreation for the first day. I feel like it's too essential to get the work done. Plus, because she's got initial optimization... Uh, optimization. Initial um, blood... Oh, tracks the blood points of an organism. Oh, so we've got a blood meter. Right. So I imagine she can exsanguinate in that case. Interesting. Okay. Um, exsanguinate as in as in uh, lose her blood, as in bleed out, not as in sanguine, which is which is different. Very low expectations is obviously and the initial optimization is going to cancel out the fact that we need recreation to start off with here. So I think we go ahead and we work on. Oh my god, there's so much stuff. Skull throne. I've never been happier to see those words next to each other. Holy shit. Okay, then. Um, why don't we, friends, why don't we build this bedroom up? So, she can have uh, a lovely double bed. Um, or is that a waste of time? You know what? It fits quite nicely into that alcove, so I'm going to go for it. She can have a nice dresser. 
And apparently the end table needs to sit at the end of the bed, even though I would commonly probably put it next to the bed, because that would make more sense to me, but what the, what the fuck do I know? Um, also, what do we want? We want light, otherwise she gets the uh, negative debuff for being in the dark. And darkness is going to be a little more relevant in a, uh, in a Lovecrafting mod, I would assume. So let's go for that instead. We'll also build like a patio light as well, I guess. Um, right there and there and there. That's fine by me. Okay, good luck, Eagle. Um, what else do we need then? We want to build, we probably want to also plan out a sort of uh, kitchen-y area. See, now the issue with this building is too close to the map edge, so we can't build in certain areas. So we have to be somewhat careful with the space. Um, let's go for a butcher's table here as well. The audio seems a little quiet to me. Does it seem quiet to you? Let me fix that. There we go. Ooh, fancy. Right. Uh, is she gonna get this done before she has to go to bed? Yeah, she should. It's only, it's only 8 o'clock. I thought it was much, much lighter than that. Uh, fuck. No, please. God. Have mercy. Hey, fuck off. Leave that alone. What the hell? I'll just come over here and smash my core and then walk off. Hey, fight me. Great first day there for uh, Eagle Throog. I get attacked by a Mega Scarab who smashes the cooler. I mean, she should be okay. I don't think she's uh, any risk of dying there. Uh, what do we want to do next? What's next on my list of essential stuff? I mean, again, setting up the cult is very much up there for me. But at this stage, I kind of feel like it more be, might be more necessary to, you know, get food and uh, fresh water. Because we do have the hygiene mod, which makes it game significantly more difficult. Um, by extent, probably wouldn't hurt getting a bathroom, but, I mean, can this all count as one, one room for that respect? I mean, it should be fine. Let's go for, uh, let's go for a steel toilet just straight in the bedroom. It's more like a prison cell at this stage. Let's we convert this one into a toilet. Uh, what, why not? No, I, I think it needs to be a different room because they get, uh, an opinion buff of it. So, yeah, sure, why the fuck not? So let's put the toilet in there. Uh, let's give her a nice shower as well. Um, we'll do basically everything from this one room, so we can put in all of the water-related stuff into here, just to sort of tidy things up a little bit. An electric boiler for the shower, we'll put it next to the shower, and we also need a water tank. Put the hot water tank there. Um, we want... what else do we want? What else does a bathroom need? Oh, we also need, obviously, wells and water pumps, but we can just grab that straight from the ocean here, so that works out for us pretty well. Um, oh, shit. The... Oh, I don't know, the ocean's kind of a bit far away. A little bit too far away to be pumping water out. You know what? It works perfectly there. So I'm actually just going to put it there instead. Um, electric pump. We'll put it next to it. And then we'll also put the water tower inside where it's a little bit safer. Water tower in the storage room. I mean, it's kind of storage. Can't argue with that. That's just science. Uh, Eagle. Fuck me running. That scared the absolute hell out of me. Oh my god. Is that hostile? No, it's just going to eat that rat. Okay, fair enough. I honestly thought it was coming to our base to come smash our stuff. Eagle, I think you'll be fine. Um... Let's just go ahead and turn off bed rest and make sure I remember to turn that back on. Oh, no, she's in acute pain for a while. I think I think she'll be okay, though. You're, you're a brave girl, Eagle. You're built like a truck. And have a face like a truck as well. Definitely many truck qualities. Uh, so we're looking for some sort of better power than uh, than none. I don't know where, where I was really going with that. So we'll put windmills either side. Ooh, symmetrical. I like it. Uh, then we can run the power conduit straight down into the walls as well. That's nice. Um, we might as well have those connected up to a battery. Oh, you don't start with batteries anymore in one room or do you? That's a little bit annoying. Okay, um, this is just regular power conduits. Yeah, we're good. Right, let's bring this all the way around the central wall then and just keep those connected up for now. We should be able to, uh, connect everything just to these cables here without having to worry about too much with the batteries. Now, I'm pretty sure they'll provide just enough power. We are going to have to deal with the trees in front of it though. I wonder if we could just get some, uh, what's our sort of basic tiles here? Cave tile. Could just use wood, seeing as we're going to be getting wood anyway from chopping down the trees in front of it. I do like the bone floors. I don't know how we get bone. Maybe it's a side effect of slaughtering? I'll have to look into it. Oh, bone tiles as well. Those are cool. Bone floor ash. This is this is a this is a good mod. I'm glad you guys recommended this because this is a great mod. If you've got any more creepy cult related mods, of course, let me know and I'll be happy to integrate them into the mod pack. Does seem uh does seem pretty ideal for what we wanted to do here. So, I've also created a collection of all the mods we're going to be using in the series that's linked down below if you're interested in starting your own um, cult, basically. Don't think I'm allowed to say that on YouTube, am I? If you want to start a cult, you're on the right channel. Right, let's get rid of those. How long is this going to take? Oh my god, the water wells seem to take fucking ages. I at least want the electric done by tonight, if nothing else. We could actually focus that rather than uh, having to build just about everything else. Hey, could you get, could you get this one done, though? Focus on the wind turbine before we do anything else. Right, we should have enough steel left over, surely. It's 100 steel, two components. Yeah, we've more than got enough for that. Hey, do you want to actually... We don't? 
we don't have enough. It's fucking water pumps, man. This mod makes it so much harder just because of the the amount of resources it swallows up and because of the constant maintenance, because the, the colonists themselves have to actually, you know, go and use the bathroom and get themselves showered and stuff. Eagle, you're going to have to work through the night, my friend. I'm sorry. Um, we need the steel. And honestly, she's getting a pretty hefty amount of steel there, too. Right, uh, finish working on the wind turbine. Yeah, but actually, like, finish working on the wind turbine, then. There we go. All right. I mean, we have something. Now, unfortunately, we've got to cut down all the trees in front of it before it's going to do anything. But that's a start. You know, that's not too terrible. Holy shit, it's alive. The base is alive. We've got water. It's not being pumped to the tower yet, because obviously we still have to build actual pipes to that. But we do have a little bit of steel left over, don't we? Um, do we actually genuinely lose all of the steel? Every last piece. I almost don't believe that, but that seems... Oh, I assume she's probably still building like these lights or something and they contain a little bit of steel. I'm not sure. Anyway, look, point is, we do need a little bit more steel still so that we can build our pipes. Now, I have in the past built them out of wood. It causes more issues than it's worth, honestly, because there are obviously wood is... Get ready for this. Wood is flammable. Um, so naturally, if we have a fire or... And, and if you run the, run the pipes parallel to electrical conduits, basically you're knocking out the electric and you're plumbing a one fell swoop. So we kind of want to future proof a little bit, I'd say. Let's get this worked on for tonight, Eagle. Um, let's go for steel. Now, where do we want to... We want to go as effectively as possible with this so we're using the least amount of resources. Um, could run it along the floor, but that'll also look ugly as fuck, and that's not what I'm about on this channel. Okay, there we go. We're good. Aesthetic is all that matters at this stage. A local aero fleet has gone mad. So, um, in Igor Attempt 1, these things are supposedly a little like hydrogen... I don't know uh, how to describe it really, little hydrogen factories from what the description was telling me. Um, small floating gelatinous creatures propelled by hydrogen, collects from water and various plant matter. So of course, if you are like me, my immediate reaction was, holy shit, I wonder if we could farm them and actually turn them into hydrogen generators. Um, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, this guy though, has gone a little bit nuts. Oh shit, the, the lockjaw killed off the, the insect. Huh. Well, that was out really, really well for us. Thank you, Lockjaw. Um, we'll also go crack this open and see if there's anything inside there, like uh, any pre-built furniture that we could go and scavenge. Okay, uh, she needs to be set to attack then, because that boy, oh lord, he coming. Um, do you want to just go ahead and just go and just go ahead and whack him preemptively? Oh shit, they're like boomalopes. Oh lord, eagle, uh, hydrogen, very flammable. Generally doesn't explode though when you hit it. To my knowledge. Anyway, let's go ahead and ignore the speed here. Just so she can patch herself up. You could extinguish that as well. Uh, pick up burning? Yeah, but do you want to haul it though? No. I mean, it doesn't matter that much. I'm not that bothered by it. We can always find out. I prefer one alive, mainly. Just to see what's going to happen with it. Right, do you want to get some bed rest? Because honestly, you're a little bit fucked up right now. No, she can sleep when she's dead. Uh, by which I mean, she can sleep when... Uh, you know, it turns into nighttime. Recreation style. Fair point. Right, let's move on to the next section of uh, what we're going to build then. Gramophone. Huh. Well, we could build a radio. Now with autoplay, that seems pretty useful. So where would we put the radio? Uh, where's she going to be working the most? It doesn't permeate through walls, which I suppose is to some extent pretty accurate. Um, if we play it while she's asleep, will that increase her mood? Will that increase recreation while she's sleeping? Now it wouldn't make any sense if it did, but I'm thinking for gameplay mechanics, maybe uh, we could we could abuse it a little bit. Um, let's just put one there so it covers the whole bedroom, I suppose. Do we have enough resources for that? I feel like we might do. Give it a go, Eagle. She's going. Hang on, she's got to build the plumbing first, which I feel like is a little more appropriate. Well, the shower works. Why didn't the toilet? Did you not? Uh, maybe we just don't have enough water yet. Yeah, we just don't have enough water yet. There we go. Okay, so no, the toilet's still not working. Oh, you know what we don't have? A sewage outlet. Shit. Right, okay, my mistake. That's me being an idiot. Again, this mod overcomplicates things so much, but I like it because it just makes sense in terms of a survival scenario. Um, let's do what any rational human being would do and pump it straight into the fucking ocean. Um, <laughs> like that would do. Nice. Who cares about the Great Barrier Reef? Igor needs to shit. <laughs> I love that the radio is too much for the power grid. We're getting rolling blackouts because we built a radio from 1912. Alright then, um, what can we toggle off for now? I mean, we should probably set the freezer to freeze. Uh, nothing? I mean, we could, we don't really need a light in the storage room, so we'll toggle that one off. Um, and we could also probably turn off one of these lights as well. That might just be enough to break even in terms of power. I mean, it doesn't also help that the windmills are both running on very, very low capacity right now. Um, this one because of this goddamn tree. 
that I can't stop from growing because unfortunately it's marshy soil. Yeah, we're just getting unlucky with the actual power itself. And now we've got a heat wave, which is exactly what I was after. All right, uh, let's go for production. Let's go for research bench. Let's put that in Eagle Throog's bedroom because why not? You know, keep things a little more effective. Um, what do we want? We want some furniture for it to sit down on as well. Then what type of furniture have we got here? We've got bone chair, which I think is incredible. We've got ourselves, um, Elder Thing Chair Pentagonal. The raised five-sided surface that allows creatures with multiple appendages to rest their weary limbs. Um, yeah, no, that's not, that's not very useful for us, is it? Well, pews? Ooh, that seems pretty good. Is that more comfortable than, uh, so comfort 0 0.7, beauty 4. Let's check out the dining chair. Uh, comfort 0 0.7, beauty 8. Right, so dining chair is just superior in every way, right? Okay, then, dining chair for eagle. Ah, oh, shit, this radio is probably not worth it, is it, right now? Sorry, radio, you're gonna have to be turned off until, uh, why can't we, we can't autoplay? Is there something else I need to do first? Maybe it's because it's lack of power. Maybe that's something to do with it. Anyway, we'll, we'll go ahead and toggle that off for now. Um, or at least uninstall it until we can sort out our power problems. Um, mainly because windmills not very effective. I would prefer, you know, batteries, solar panels, that type of thing. Sustainable energy, she says. Uh, as she's about to build a major pollution point. Sorry? Uh, the, the eerie tree. Hello, hello, Eerie Tree. Ah, uh, there doesn't seem to be any ambient noise. Maybe we've got to investigate it first. Hello, um, harvestable limited lifespan. Can I harvest it and 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 uh, gain its power? An ominous tree with an indecipherable aura, indescribable, indecipherable. <laughs> That wasn't me this time. Aura. Approaching this tree causes most colonists a great deal of anxiety. Drawing closer. Okay, that time it was me. Drawing closer, colonists swear that they can hear voices speaking in strange tongues, like my videos. Harvestable, limited lifespan. Um, it's nice to know that it has 80% for flammability, seeing as it's a fucking tree that doesn't make much sense. It's got a lifespan of uh, roughly 18,000 days there. Okay, incredible, thank you. Oh, apparently it gave nutrition? Not sure about that one. Okay, the eerie tree. Extreme bright risk. Um... Performed investigation. I have looked upon all the universe has to hold of horror, and even the skies of spring and the flowers of summer must award be a uh, must uh, must ever award be poison to me. Uh, I don't I don't get that. You know that was so scary then for a while, and then it sort of the grammar fell apart at the end. Um, so she's gonna be basically be fucked for a couple of days and start going a little bit nuts. Huh. I didn't never really considered that when playing with one colonist. Okay, Igor, off you go. Just go home and go and sleep. Uh, Igor has become incessantly writing pages of strange symbols. Oh. Write, writing in a frenzy. Igor, is everything... Oh. Igor has no memory of the writing that is still slightly dampened from the sweat of their labours. It's a ghastly book filled with strange alien languages that are not readily understood. The ominous-looking diagrams of ritual sacrifices and spells within the tome have some colonists unnerved by its occult nature, whereas others have proposed setting up a proper research centre to further the study and secrets held within. Well, Grimoire of the Occult, um, yep, that's fine. Thank you for watching. Uh, that was episode one of Igor going fucking insane. What do you think? Should we investigate the Grimoire? I don't know. You'll have to leave a comment and let me know. Shout out to my top tier, insane level, occult tier patrons. Big Dick Timmy, Sean Thornton, Zachary Harris, Harik, Lucas Holting, Hey Dog, Croesus, Gabriel Vanders, Jocelyn, Dean Tesla, Michael Mullen, Logan Thorne, Katapai, Steve, James Ogilvy, Escape, and Jackson Woodman for their occult levels of support. Then at the more sensible Patreon tiers, we have ourselves Nathaniel Limburg, Brendan Mantonia, Necro Philan, Felix Deal, Princess Ugly the Dragon, Nick, Noble S, Quit Lux, Please Are Even, Fukumbo Vasquez, Paul Master, and Paratour Augustus, Jack Allen, Chancellor Sheep Palpatine, I'm the Lizard King, Llewellyn Thomas, Euron DeVries, UFTs, Dunk Pony 2 and 7, Jordan Cavill, Astro, and Sidini, and many, many others. Thank you for your support. That's a spider. Um, suddenly, I don't like this mod. Uh, excuse me? Is there gonna be. Oh god, they killed the other lockjaw. Are there gonna be many, many spode? Are the spode gonna eat the other bugs? We can only pray.